More on this story. Our guest is Jasmine El Gamel, political analyst and former Pentagon advisor on the Middle East. Thank you so much for answering our for joining us on France 24 and agreeing to answer our questions. Uh, just moments ago, we learned uh, that uh, an Iranian um, uh, vessel um, it co uh, attacked and well took over a, a cargo vessel that was in the Strait of Hormuz. Um, wh wh what can we? What do we know about this situation uh, right now? It's it's being reported by. By Iran's national news agency, but do we have any information about what it is and, and what it signals, especially in this climate? Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, as you said, Iranians have reportedly boarded uh, a vessel in the Strait of Hormuz. The vessel was Portuguese flagged, but um, uh, according to the Iranians, and as reported by Al Arabiya, has links to an Israeli owned company, which is the reason for the Iranians presumably boarding it in retaliation or as part of the retaliation, one can imagine. Um, of the Israeli strike uh, on uh, on er the Iranian general um, in the U in the consulate in Syria. And so um, events are still unfolding. There's a video that has been shared online of Iranians boarding the vessel from a helicopter. That video has not yet, to my knowledge, been verified. Um, but this is um, as to be expected. I think you and I were just talking about this yesterday, um, where we talked about the potential for Iranian retaliation and that we should expect an Iranian retaliation. And this seems to be just the first step, potentially, in what could be several moves against Israel or Israeli interests in the region. Right. So since yesterday, as you were mentioning, so Joe Biden, the U.S. president, saying don't, a message to Iran. And at the same time, we're hearing reports of additional U.S. troops heading to the region. Uh, what are we ma to make of this double speak? So anytime something like this happens, of course, you're going to have public posture and a behind the scenes sort of posture or behind the scenes diplomacy happening. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Now, Israel is the U.S.'s closest ally in the region. Um, the U.S. obviously is going to stand by Israel in the case of any attack against it. And so it shouldn't be surprising that President Biden and the Biden administration have been very uh, firm in their public support for Israel telling Iran, you know, warning it basically not to attack Israel, saying that U.S. support for Israel is ironclad and so on. Uh, and of course, as you mentioned, making moves to send assets to the region in case something were to happen that required U.S. involvement. However, behind the scenes, the U.S. is frantically using diplomacy through its Arab allies in the region to let Iran know that the U.S. is not interested in an all-out war, that an escalation doesn't benefit anybody. Iran is saying the same kinds of things to the U.S. behind the scenes. Obviously, neither of those two countries are interested interested in an all-out regional war. Um, however, it seems that Israel is sort of acting first and thinking later when it comes to the consequences of its actions. As we know, the Israelis didn't, um, did not alert the Americans beforehand uh, when they conducted that strike against Iranian interests in Syria. The U.S. was reportedly frustrated by that, but here we are. It is what it is. What happened happened, and now all of these different actors are scrambling to respond to it. Well, uh, Ms. El Gamal, for, for allies whose bond seemed to be coming apart at the seams, I mean, yes, you were talking about public support for Israel, but at the same time, we were hearing a lot more, um, especially in the last few months, uh, really kind of openly uh, calls for restraint uh, by the White House to its closest ally, Israel. But do you think that this threat um, could heal that, that rift, at least the one that we're seeing out in the open? That's a really excellent point, actually. Um, the you know one one option that Iran has, which I don't think it's going to take, but of course, strategically, if Iran were not to respond and not to retaliate, that rift that you're talking about between the Israelis and the U.S. Um, would uh, you know would would continue? I mean, there have been talks over the last several weeks and months uh, with the Americans uh, really taking a harder and harder or harsher line 
against Israel, both publicly and behind the scenes. Now, of course, any threat to Israel or the U.S. from an outsider or from a common adversary like Iran brings the, you know, heals that rift, as you would say, or at the very least just puts it to the back burner. If Israel is at risk of an attack by Iran, if the U.S. is at risk of an attack by Iran, of course those two countries are going to put any differences aside and focus on that immediate threat from the adversary. Um, so that's a great point that you make. Now we're seeing, uh, you mentioned uh, in your opening, um, diplomatic efforts from various other countries, both inside and outside the region, Germany, Turkey, uh, Arab players. How much clout do these uh, outside uh, countries have and their, and their diplomatic teams? I mean, can they have an impact on Iran's actions or is Iran really uh, acting like, you know, the rogue element that at least the West uh, posits it as being? Well, look, I mean, like I said, none of these countries in the region, nor outside the region, frankly, want to see an all-out war in the Middle East. I mean, these tensions that have been simmering, these low-level attacks back and forth that have been conducted by various parties over the last few months have been really um, anxiety-inducing for leaders, for people in the region, and of course for people and countries outside the region as well. It is in no one's interest for a, a regional war to erupt, certainly not for President Biden, who has an election to deal with in just a few months, and President Trump pointing fingers at President Biden, saying, look, he's taking us back into the Middle East, he's dragging us back into war. I mean, really, it's not good for anyone. I come back to my point about the recklessness with which Israel has been acting in the region, uh, basically, um, uh, making moves that it is not clearing with the U.S. in advance and um, putting the entire region at risk. You know, when you say uh, you're talking about Iranian recklessness or Iran being rogue, um, Iran is actually, funny enough, now in a position where it is not the reckless actor at the moment. It is an actor that has been attacked and is now thinking about ways to retaliate. Um, and it is Israel that, in fact, um, for the last several weeks in particular, not only in the last few months, but especially in the last few weeks, that has been acting with some degree of recklessness in the region. And including in Lebanon as well. We've seen attacks there by uh, Israel in Beirut. Thank you so much for joining us uh, once again. Jasmine El-Gamal, uh, political analyst and former Pentagon uh, advisor on the Middle East.